Hello friends. Today we will discuss ultrasound guided median nerve block. The objectives of my presentation are introduction to median nerve block, relevant anatomy of the median nerve, preoperative assessment and preparation of the patient, indication and contraindication of median nerve block, complication and side effect of median nerve block, prerequisite of median nerve block, equipment and logistics required to execute the successful block, ultrasound setting for this block, sono anatomy of the median nerve, how to make position for median nerve block, conduct of the median nerve block, intraoperative care of the patient, postoperative care of the patient and clinical tips. Introduction to median nerve block. Median nerve is formed by the union of lateral root from the lateral cord of the brachial plexus and median root from the medial cord of the brachial plexus. Median nerve contains all nerve fibers of the brachial plexus starting from cervical 5, cervical 6, cervical 7, cervical 8 and thoracic 1. Median nerve does not give any branch in the axilla and in the arm. So median nerve can be blocked effectively solely in the forearm. Median nerve can be blocked at mid or lower humerus level, at elbow joint, at mid forearm and at the wrist. After passing through two heads of the peronotaris muscle, it runs in center of the forearm between superficial and deep flexors of the forearm. Median nerve innervates four superficial flexor, gives anterior interstitial nerve, and five centimeter above wrist gives off palmar cutaneous branch. Median nerve supplies almost all flexor muscle of the forearm, thinner muscles of the hand and skin of the palmar surface of the lateral three and a half fingers. Relevant anatomy of the median nerve. Median nerve can be described from anatomical point of view regarding the block like uh, median nerve in the axilla and in the arm, second median nerve in the forearm and median nerve in the hand. Median nerve has no branches in axilla and arm. Second median nerve in the forearm gives off four muscular branches to all flexors of the forearm except flexor carpi ulnaris. Anterior interstitial nerve. It innervates two and a half deep flexors of the arm. Palmar cutaneous branch supply skin of the palm. Median nerve in the hand gives six digital branches to three and a half fingers two radial lumbricals, three branches to thinner muscles of the thumb, median nerve in the axilla and in the arm. Median nerve is formed by the union of lateral root from lateral cord and median root from medial cord of brachial plexus. In the axilla, at its formation, it lies lateral to the third part of the axillary artery. After that, it enters the arm. It runs first lateral to the brachial artery, which is continuation of the axillary artery, then moves anterior to the brachial artery, and approximately at mid humerus, it rolls on medial side of the brachial artery, then runs along medial side of the brachial artery in its full course in the arm up to the cubital fossa. Median nerve does not give any branch in the axilla and in the arm. In its course, in the arm, it lies on coracobrachialis muscle and brachialis muscle. In cubital fossa, median nerve is medial to the bicipital tendon and brachial artery, covered by bicipital aponeurosis. Median nerve enters the forearm by passing through two heads of the pronator teres. This is a diagram showing median nerve in the axilla and in the arm. We can see here median nerve is lateral to the axillary artery in the axilla and it moves on the lateral side of the brachial artery which is continuation of the axillary artery. Then it comes in front of the artery and at the mid humeral position it occupies the medial position. 
Medianer in the forearm. Medianer enters the forearm between two heads of teres muscle and runs down in almost center of the forearm between superficial and deep flexor of the forearm. Median nerve is clearly visible on ultrasound image in the center of the proximal forearm as hyperechoic structure between facial plane of superficial and deep flexor of the forearm. Median nerve is easily blocked by depositing local anesthetic solution in the interfacial plane. In the forearm, it innervates four superficial flexor of the forearm. It gives anterior interstitial nerve, which innervates deep flexors. 5 cm above wrist, it gives palmar cutaneous branch. Other branches are vascular and articular. This is a diagram, sono anatomic view of the median nerve in the cubital fossa, where we can see the eye sign when it passes through two heads of the peroneal teres muscle. Muscular innervation of median nerve in the forearm to all superficial flexors except flexor carpa ulnaris. These muscles are peroneal teres muscle, flexor carpa radialis muscle, palmaris longus muscle, flexor digitorum, superficial muscles. The fifth muscle, which is last muscle of the flexor group, is flexor carpa ulnaris supplied by the ulnar nerve. After passing between two heads of peroneal teres, it runs between flexor digitorum superficialis and flexor digitorum profundus. At risk, it lies between tendon of flexor carpi radialis and flexor digitorum superficial, then inter flexor retiniculum. At risk, it lies very superficial under the skin branches to all flexors except flexor carpi ulnaris. This is a diagram in which flexor digitorum superficial is removed to view all deep flexors and to interstitial nerve. Arises 5 to 8 cm distal to the lateral epicondyle. It passes between two heads of coronaterius muscle, runs along the volar surface of the flexor digitorum profundus, courses distally along the interstitial membrane, terminate in pronator quadratus muscle near its joint. It innervates two and a half deep flexors of the forearm, lower radio ulnar joint and this joint. The muscles innervated by the interstitial nerve are flexor digitorum profundus muscle, lateral half, flexor pollicis longus muscle, pronator quadratus muscle, two and a half muscles supplied by the anterior interstitial nerve. This is a diagram showing the muscle supplied by the anterior interstitial nerve. Palmar cutaneous branch of median nerve in the forearm. 5 cm above the wrist, median nerve gives off palmar cutaneous branch, which does not pass under flexor retiniculum. Palmar cutaneous branch supplies skin over thinner eminence, two third of the palm. It is always spare in carpal tunnel syndrome because it does not pass under the retiniculum. At rest, median nerve lies between tendons of the flexor carpi radialis and flexor digitorum superficial. Then it enters the hand by passing under flexor retiniculum. This is a diagram showing palmar cutaneous nerve which is passing over the retiniculum and giving its branches. Median nerve enters the hand under flexor retiniculum and divide in its common palmar digital branch and a recurrent branch to muscles of the thinar eminence. The lateral branch is proper digital nerve, which divides into two digital nerves, innervate skin of the lateral half of the ring finger, medial half of the middle finger, including nail beds. The medial digital branch first supplies two radial umbilicals and divides into four digital nerves, innervate skin of the lateral side of the middle finger, medial side of the index finger, lateral side of the index finger and thumb. Recurrent branch supplies following muscles. These muscles are mnemonic lobe, that means two lateral lumbricals, opponent's pollicis, abductor pollicis brevis, flexor pollicis brevis. Median nerve innervates skin of the thinar eminence, palm and three and a half fingers. This is a diagram showing median nerve in the hand. Uh, it's a light blue color. We can see it supplies thumb, index finger, middle finger and half of the ring finger. Median nerve. The median nerve provides sensory supply to the following areas of the hand. The skin of the palmar aspect of lateral 
three and a half digits. There are numerous vascular branches and articular branches to elbow and lower radial nerve joint. This is a diagram showing the median nerve in uh, yellow color. In the palmar surface, it is three and a half, and the dorsal surface it is supplying the nail bed area, almost half of the dorsal surface of the ring finger. Please remember there is always overlapping of the cutaneous nerves. Preoperative assessment and preparation are same as for the routine cases. We take history, do physical and general examination. We request for laboratory investigation. We do the risk assessment and grading. We optimize the patient if there are comorbids and prepare the patient for anesthesia and surgery. We take consent, keep the patient in PO and do the side marking. Indication of the median nerve block are anesthesia for surgery of lateral three and a half finger and palmar surface of the metacarpal bone. Palmar fasciotomy. Post-operative analgesia for surgery of hand in median territory with or without GA. Analgesia for hand in burns in areas innervated by median nerve. Rescue analgesia can be given if the block fails. Contraindication of median nerve block. As usual, patient refusal for regional anesthesia and if the patient is non-cooperative. Local infection at the site of injection or sepsis. Neuropathy is a relative contraindication from litigation point of view. Allergy to the drug is another contraindication. Complication and side effects include partial or failed block, infection which needs a sterile technique, intravascular puncture can occur, uh, bleeding at the puncture site, intramuscular hematoma, interneural injection. Nerve injury in including neuropraxia and neurolysis, local anesthetic systemic toxicity can occur if the dose exceeded or the drug is injected accidentally into a vein. Allergic reaction to the local anesthetic can occur. For the successful execution of a ultrasound guided median nerve block, we need a sterile technique, bright light source. 18 gauge intravenous line working. We need standard monitoring as far as general anesthesia. We need resuscitation drugs including lipid solution. We need a trained assistant. We need GA facilities in hand in case of failure or in case of unwanted reaction. We take consent and detailed briefing of the block to the patient before starting surgery or in the preoperative area. We keep the patient NPO and do sign in. Equipment required for median nerve block. We need basic standard monitors. We need high frequency linear ultrasound probe and ultrasound machine. We need insulated blunt bevel echogenic needle 50 to 80 millimeter length. Sterile gloves. We need sterile cleaning solution. We need probe cover and sterile jelly. We need sterile towel to isolate the area. We need 5 cc syringe with local anesthetic for puncture side analgesia. We need pressure mirroring syringes with tubing. Local anesthetic volume and dose calculated as per kg. Sedative analgesic may be required like midazolam, fentanyl and ketamine. Facilities must be available to convert patient to GA in case if required. Ultrasound setting. We put ultrasound machine in front of our eyes. Uh, we use high frequency linear probe. We use implant technique. Out of plane technique can be used. We identify orientation of needle with the probe. We keep the angle of the needle with probe at less than 30 degree. Best view is obtained when the needle is parallel to the probe. Needle length 50 to 80 millimeter depending on the muscle mass. Depth setting is 1 to 3 centimeter and 70 kg per cent. Maybe more in OB. Sononatomy of the median nerve. Sononatomy is essential before practical conduct of the block. Median nerve can be blocked at different levels. We prefer to block median nerve at mid forearm and facial plane. In the upper arm, it rolls over brachial artery from lateral to medial. In lower arm, it lies medial to the brachial artery throughout its course. In the forearm, we place ultrasound probe transversely. Identify superficial and deep flexors of the forearm. Median nerve is hyperechoic. Centrally placed structure. 
clearly visible in facial plane between superficial and deep flexor of the forearm. The median nerve is traced upward and forward. We use part to optimize best view. At rest, median nerve becomes superficial and lies between tendons of the flexor carpi radialis and flexor digitorium superficialis. This is a diagram showing the median nerve in mid forearm. We can see clearly visible median nerve between two groups of the muscle, superficial and deep flexor of the forearm. This is a diagram showing sonar anatomy of median nerve at mid forearm. Uh, we can see clearly in the color picture, median nerve is placed between the two groups of the flexor compartment, superficial and deep. FCR means flexor carpi radialis and flexor digitorum superficialis, which are two flexor muscles of the superficial group. And down we can see pronated teres muscle, flexor pollicis longus and flexor digitorum profundus. Making position for the median nerve block. Block is executed in area designated for regional blocks, where all facilities must be available and we elevate the pad up to avoid bending of the operator. We keep the patient in supine position. Arm is abducted as convenient. Elbow kept extended and little flex. Hand is kept supine. Operator can work from sides of the patient. See the next slide. A routine pillow may be kept to relax neck muscles. This is a diagram showing the position for a successful execution of the median nerve block and in a implant technique we can approach the patient from lateral side as well as from median side. Conduct of the block. Sonotomy is done before preparing and draping the block area. We are using this sonotomy as a routine in every block. Sign in and site marking is done in perioperative holding area. Sterile preparation of the area done in area isolated with towels. We use puncture site analgesia. Median nerve is blocked at several levels, at mid humeral level where it is medial to the brachial artery, at the lower humerus level, at elbow level, at mid forearm level, interfacial plane which is our favorite technique. Median nerve can be blocked above the wrist where it is superficial and between tendons. In this presentation we will discuss mid forearm median nerve block. Conduct of the median nerve block at mid forearm. It's an interfacial plane block technique which gives its safety profile. It is away from the radial artery, but if you come from lateral side, radial artery can come on the way. At mid forearm level, the median nerve is visible as hyperechoic structure between facial plane of superficial and deep flexor as we discuss again and again. Pro position will be transverse. At mid forearm level or slightly higher near elbow, Identify the hyper central structure median nerve. Strike the nerve up and down and obtain the best view. Nerve can be blocked easily from medial and also from lateral side. From lateral side, radial artery comes in the way. We prefer median side from mid forearm block. There is no accompanying blood vessel in this area. We use interfacial plane to block median nerve which is the best way to avoid internal injection. This is a diagram showing mid forearm median nerve block where the fluid is injected between two layers of the superficial and deep groove. Uh, mid forearm block which is again discussed earlier intraoperative care. We brief all detail of the block to the patient before starting the procedure. We apply full standard monitor as for general anesthesia throughout the procedure. We avoid hypothermia using full body bear huggers. We test motor and sensory block before tourniquet and before the incision. Motor block is tested by finger movement. We isolate the limb by full screen. Pseudoanalgesia can be given by better after confirmation of the block. Pseudoanalgesia can mask signs of the local anesthetic systemic toxicity. We monitor the local anesthetic systemic toxicity. Keep in hand lipid emulsion and in OR and recovery. Alternatively, close verbal communication is maintained with the patient throughout the procedure when we don't give any analgesia or sedation. In case of inadequate block, get ready to convert to general anesthesia. After 
Completing the surgery, we gently shift the patient to recovery area. We apply the monitor in the same way and we also monitor for local anesthetic system of toxicity. We protect patient from injury with arm string. We inform patient about approximate time of return of sensations. We exchange cell phone contact to assist in case of problem or queries. Early mobility can be done with these blocks. Early resumption of food and drink is allowed. Early pain-free physiotherapy can be done. We prescribe analgesia, IV or oral when block wears off. Tips. We put ultrasound machine in front of our eyes. Sonoanatomy is must be for practical conduct to assess the neuroanatomy. Always give support to the probe hand and needle hand. We use the sterile technique. We confirm orientation of needle with ultrasound pro. In plane technique is usually used. Out of plane can be used. Color doubler can be used to avoid blood vessel. Open interfacial plane with hydro dissection under direct vision. Optimal local anesthetic volume is 5 to 10 ml. We inject local anesthetic in small increments and encircle nerve like donut. We don't move the needle until full needle is visible with bevel cut. We avoid internal injection by using interfacial plane and if the patient is complaining of pain on injection we stop. We can see the pressure rise in the syringe tubing and we also check for fluid under direct VN coming out of the needle. We use nerve stimulator at 0.1 mA which is lowest current. Even we are touching nerve it does not give the twitch. It gives twitch when we are inside the nerve. When we penetrate the nerve, it gives twitch. Thanks.